good morning to all we welcome you to this uh, weekend webinar on azure auto manage myself shaitali the host for today's emerging technology webinar so let's start with the webinar introduction before that let me introduce you to uh, to all the today's event sponsor synergetics synergetics learning uh, is india's most distinguished learning company in it technology we are ready with our top class uh, learning solutions that can be made to fit every requirement in every sector across every industry around the globe our expansive greenfield solution includes onboarding solution reskilling certi solutions certification certification plus add on cloud adoption architecting practice playbook latest technology training emerging technology training content development and more today's webinar is organized by etc community and sponsored by synergetics and microsoft our etc community is open to all the people who are interested in emerging technologies Uh, you just need to follow our uh, meetup group which is an emerging technology community for all you need to install the meetup app on your phone and follow our community so you will get the update about our event meetups webinars and workshops now small code of conduct which you all need to follow please note you are not allowed to take the screenshot of the presentation and cannot do the screen recording if you need the recording just subscribe to our youtube channel the youtube channel link will be posted in the chat box later now the agenda uh, why azure auto manage what is azure auto manage and more will be cover in this webinar today speaker for this session is mr om prakash pande om prakash sir is highly experienced mct with decades of rich experience in technical learning and implementation also he is working with synergetics as an avp of delivery department go ahead then we have the upcoming certification session on az 900 it will be two half a day sessions uh, on 13th and 14th of october the timings are mentioned as well 4 pm to 8 pm the registration link will be given to you in the chat box then we have sc 400 on 15th of october it will be one day training Uh, the timings are 10 am to 4 pm again the registration link will be provided to you all so you can register through that also do follow us on our social media platforms to get daily updates regarding the webinar workshop and more now i would like to hand over the mic to op sir so he can carry forward the webinar thank you thanks to all thanks a lot chaitali Hello and welcome everyone. Hi sir, good morning. Hi sir, thank you. Good morning. Let me know if my screen is visible to you all. Yes, it is visible. Yes. Yeah. Let's get started. My name is Om Prakash Pandey. and today's session we are doing on azure auto manage now as the name suggests many of us would be already doing these things in in uh, various ways within our environment right and if you see the current infrastructure especially on cloud platform it has grown in terms of leaps and bounds i remember very clearly 2 to 3 years ago where i was pushing various teams across the globe to make sure they start moving their resources on cloud platform today maximum of resources are already there on 
cloud platforms like Azure, AWS, GCP, right? Now the entire industry is moving into the next phase. And the next phase over here is to make sure how do you simplify the management? Now, once you look at management of these resources, it is not only about the cloud resources, which is say 70 to 80%. It also should include some of the heavy workloads or resources, which is still lying within our on premises environment. Now, hybrid has been a story and hybrid will remain a story for upcoming years as well because there are workloads which people don't want to move on cloud or they are having certain restrictions requirements right so we will need to come up with tools resources which can help us manage cloud resources plus the hybrid environment the remaining part of resources which is there within our on premises platform so the core purpose of this session is to help you all get started with Azure Auto Manage. Thanks to Manish, Shaitali, and the entire team at Synergetics to make sure they help us understand the new and emerging technologies which are there on the cloud environment. Guys, as part of Synergetics, I am an AVP delivery at Synergetics. I take care of number of technology ventures over here. I am playing an active role in consulting and also in a training services business. In today's environment, there are a lot of customers who have been asking for managed services and they are looking at us for helping them in managing these deployments which has been done successfully. So I'm sure many of us who have joined this session would be from architecting background, they would already know about Azure. That's the mandate which I'm going ahead with. That's a prerequisite that is there that everybody should be aware about cloud. They should be aware about creation of virtual machines. Right? If not, you can be with us. No problem. It will make some sense to you all and you all can attend other piece of sessions like AZ 900 where you all will get to know about cloud. So keeping that assumption in mind, let's proceed ahead. As part of this core agenda, what I'm going to discuss about is why Azure Auto Manage, what has been the existing solutions, what is the need for a new solution. We'll be discussing about the components of Azure Manage, what it is all about. Then we'll get into the respective features right and i'm not sure how much time i will be left out with from an implementation standpoint but yes i definitely want to make sure people see these things in action so as i go ahead i'll make sure we implement azure auto manage and many a times people feel that since Windows is the environment for Microsoft, every feature which is coming up will be aligned to Windows platform only, which is not true. So here we'll also take a look at how do you do auto management for Linux environment? Let's proceed ahead. As part of your overall strategy, once we are looking at the resources, these are five key members that we have. Okay. Some of the core aspects that you all see over here. First element would be governance of resources. Now, why am I talking about governance to start with? The reason being whenever we start moving before even we start moving our resources onto cloud. The first step over here should be setting up the environment. And when I say setting up the environment, what I'm referring over here is. Azure Active Directory. 
creation of users or synchronization of the users using Azure Active Directory. Making sure we have appropriate Azure Active Directory groups being created. Or we have a synchronized group over here. Now once that part is being taken care, then we should go ahead and create set of policies over here. Now using these policies, we can enforce some of the best practices. Now these best practices would be only in terms of dev test environment, staging environment, production environment. So rather than writing it again and again, what we can do is we can create something called as blueprints over here. I'm sure everybody might have been aware of what is blueprints. So blueprint basically is summation of policies, role based access control. Creation of resources using ARM templates. So all these things combined as one unit. That is what is. Azure blueprints. And it can help us replicate these things across multiple environments. As part of my architecting career, I have come across various organizations and helped multiple organizations to create their own blueprints. Which they can replicate for multiple customers. Simplify the processes for them. Streamline resources for them. And that is how it will become easier for multiple organizations to handle more than 1000 plus customers on day to day basis. While we are creating these policies and blueprints, we should also be. Cautious of costs over here. The reason being once it comes to. Cloud based resources, it is pay as you go model. Now many of you all would say Om Prakash pay as you go model. Isn't that a best feature of cloud? Yes, it is, but it's there is also a. Other side of the coin. When you say cost management or cost on cloud. It's not a one time cost. It is pay as you go. So if you forget to shut down a machine, if you forget to release the resources after the dev test is being done, you will keep paying for it. So we will have to make sure. We. Deploy certain set of tools over here, which will make sure that you start those machines when required and stop those machines when not required. Apart from that, what is the utilization of those machines? Is it being used less than 30% and still I'm paying for it? So such kind of things there has to be. Policies that can be created. Or we can create something called as configuration for these resources. Right, so using this configuration. We have options over here. Which I will be talking in more detail as I go ahead about desired state configuration. Right, which is DSC. So one very, very important aspect is what is the kind of configuration that you want to create? The reason being. As far as ARM templates is concerned, it will help you create some of the resources. No doubt on that. But still, still, if there are certain specifics that we want to implement, right? Certain internal components or resources that we would want to create, that's where we should get into configuration details. Time and again, update management because infrastructure resources that we are creating. They don't work in isolation. Right, they will be working with the developer team and what they are doing is they are consistently creating a new resource. Going on to newer software packages, right? Newer versions of Angular, React, open source environments or newer versions of Java.net. So we will have to run those things on our 
infrastructure. Now, keeping that kind of aspect in mind, consistent update management is essential over here. But one would say, what what is supposed to be managed there? We will need to manage the downtime because whenever there are updates happening on a given machine, it will become unresponsive for some time or the responses will be delayed. Correct. So how do we make sure that if you have multiple machines, how do you do this installation or updates phase wise? OK, so how do you perform these? Updates phase wise, that would be an important aspect in terms of update management. In terms of automation over here, Azure automation can play a very, very important role for desired state configuration. For doing automation using runbooks, right? That's a very, very important part over here. Along with this, we can do scripting for resources. We can write our own PowerShell script. So I'm very sure people who have joined this session, if you are new to PowerShell, or if you have not worked with PowerShell, my request to all of you all would be please start working with PowerShell. Though you have graphical flows as well as part of Azure automation, still scripting will always be a key aspect over here. So some of these aspects, like I said, governance, configuration, some of these things should be done before even the entire environment is being set up, right? But it cannot be beyond 40 to 50 percent. Another remaining 60 to 50 to 60 percent would happen when the resources are in execution. Because that's where you'll know through monitoring, that's where you would know whether whatever resource that you have created is working correctly or not. Is it facing some problem? So what we will do is we will configure Application insights over here will perform monitoring over here to check whether the governance policies being mentioned is working correctly, right? If there are any alerts being raised or any issues being thrown up, right? Whether the script is working correctly or not. So all these things we will find out during the in the monitoring phase. Most of these resources, I would say governance, configuration, monitoring, this forms the foundation of building a secure and manageable environment as we go ahead. Now, once we are done with this, we can go ahead with protection of resources using backup, disaster recovery solutions, right? I would not talk about this in today's session because that's not our focus area. Our major focus area today is configuration, right? And here you'll see the major sections over here in terms of automation, scripting, update management. So we'll talk more in this environment today. Apart from this, we have security of resources, threat protection by using Microsoft Defender for cloud. And there are a number of other defenders which are connected to Microsoft Defender for Cloud, which is Defender for SQL, Defender for Virtual Machines, Defender for uh, Key Vault, Storage, right? So there are multiple Defender solutions which come together as part of security. Like Chaitali was mentioning about, we'll come to this security feature in SC uh, series, which is SC 900, SC 100, 200, 300, and 400. You can enroll for these sessions or you can send your requirements to our team. They can assist you for security. We'll take up as a separate session for those. Let me proceed ahead. Now, these are some of the core features that I mentioned earlier in the previous slide. And I just discussed about some alignment which is required from infrastructure perspective and development perspective. 
guys apart from these two alignments there has to be a clear cut business alignment as well now what do i mean by this business alignment and what am i trying to focus over here as part of this business alignment first thing we have to check is cost which i already mentioned in the previous slide apart from this we have to check for what are the workloads that we are pushing on cloud right and when i say workloads here i am referring to various workloads like web applications sharepoint applications active directory resources when it, where, where people would be creating their own virtual machines and active directory inside that right so what is the kind of workloads that we are putting or running on cloud environment while we are putting these workloads for execution we will need to make sure that we have these workloads highly available reliable and people should be able to connect with minimum latency second important aspect over here is what is the performance expectation so when i use a term as latency over here uh, we will need to make sure this has having minimum latency because of performance expectation now one would say om prakash can you give us a, an example of what would be the what do you mean by this impact while you are trying to transfer x amount of rupees from account a to account b right or you are uh, doing a payment on a shop where your paytm application or uh, any upi application that you are using gets stuck right now you're saying i have done the payment but the vendor is saying boss i have not received the payment that's what i'm talking about so i'm sure everybody will be able to imagine that scenario this is what i'm referring to so that's why when it comes to performance expectation people would expect these things or customers or end users would prefer these things to happen in milliseconds that is what is called as impact and with so many apps available so many options available people would not think twice before moving from one application or moving from one vendor to second vendor so we will have to make sure we have our application which meets the performance expectation and has minimum business interruptions if you look at the third and very important member over here is insights which i mentioned in the previous slide where we can do tracking reporting right we can document these things because when you are promising the customer saying this is what i what i'm giving customer will always prefer this to be in writing and when i say writing there is no legal documentation as such what i'm referring over here is sla's so what is the sla that you are giving for your existing environment please tell me that right so that's our commitment that we are making to our customers now how do you achieve these things guys criticality ensuring we have right impact and we stand by our commitment now for ensuring these things we will need to have cloud operations discipline right where we need to have inventory of how many machines we have what are resources that we have we need to have in depth visibility in terms of the running applications how much time it is taking for connectivity right so all these things all the telemetry has to be there that's first part so in case there is something going wrong we should be able to see it very very crystal clear and make quick changes which is required over there second thing is your operational compliance and 
the previous slide which I was where I was mentioning about. Previous slide where I was talking about where I said we need to have desired state configuration DSC configuration details. Now why is that required? So if you see the very important point over here. You have something called as management of drifts. OK, you have management of drift which is happening drift in sense changing from what is the required environment to a new environment. That's what is referred as drift. So you cannot avoid the drift because as people keep working, they'll they'll be trying out new things. They will be creating new resources. So th there is always a chance of. Getting into the drift. So getting it back to the normal, getting it back to the required version or required resources. That's what is called as desired state configuration. And that can be done easily by using resources like Azure. Automation where we can create. DSC rules, DSC files, MOF files we can create and apply it onto our. Existing environment. Third important aspect that we mentioned in the previous slide as well, I'll quickly cover that up. Which is. Taking backup or Azure site recovery to protect those resources, so which and again there will be a cost for production, right? So you cannot say I'll protect every resource. So make sure you pick critical resources, you protect them and provide right set of RPO RTO for that. Which is recovery point objective and recovery time objective. In terms of platform operations, so one important aspect from management is operational compliance. What is required for that is inventory and visibility. Along with this platform operations. So how are you? Looking at the complete environment over here. In terms of process of installation configuration. When a machine goes down, how do you bring up those resources quickly? So all these things have to be documented. All the scripts have to be already written for that. Much before that op that workload is being migrated and is functional over here. So two things that you'll see over here. One is platform operations, which is the Microsoft environment or the vendors environment. And second is workload operation. Now why two things over here? Let me clarify on this. Now when you're going for platform operations. Here we are abiding by. The rules mentioned by Microsoft or the vendor. Where Microsoft would say I am giving you SLA of 99.90% SLA of 99.95% or SLA of 99.99%. Okay. But guys, those those SLAs are not for your workload. Those SLAs are for services given by Microsoft, which could be virtual machines with SSD, virtual machines within availability set, virtual machines within availability zone. Right. Now coming to workload operation. So what is the application that you have deployed? And is there a dependency between other applications? Right, so what are the solution components that you have? So. If you are giving an SLA for your workload, it will be. LCM or, or the least common denominator of all these workloads or all these services combined. And if there is your on premises environment involved over here as one of the solution components. Whatever downtime you're expecting of that, the SLA will come down to that over here. Which could be say 80% or 85%. Right, so there will always be a difference between platform operations, platform SLAs and your workload operations, workload SLAs. OK. I hope that part is clear. Now. Why these two slides over here? So whatever I have discussed in these two slides. The major thing which I am trying to mention over here is in terms of operational compliance. 
how do we get these management of these resources being done so that we can take a call whether you want to protect and recover from these resources right how do you work with these members right this is what we are trying to figure out and i'm sure in these two slides we have enough amount of details for understanding why is it essential for us to do operational compliance check for these operations and take measures in right time to get the right kind of to uh, stand by the sla that we have promised from microsoft's perspective they have already shared saying boss if you use these set of services we will promise a certain sla for you right now it is up to us how we can provide the workload sla's now keeping this context in mind let's go into the let's go to the resource which is azure auto manage and how does azure auto manage helps you stand by your promise get the resources which we have uh, discussed in previous section as far as azure auto manage is concerned this first thing that it does is it onboards your virtual machines right and is it meant for other pass services no it's focused on infrastructure solutions it's focused on network focus on and again to be precise it focuses on virtual machines now when you are using azure auto manage you can enforce set of best practices over here from azure perspective from cloud perspective we can enforce various custom best practices over here depending upon your organization requirements see every member within this classroom or within every organization there are people who have been working with on premises environment for a very very long time they know what is required they know what is expected right they have uh, been through the bad <laughs> bad phases as well right they have taken up lot of heat from the development team customers so based on those mistakes that they have done in past mistake that we would have done in past if you would not want to repeat that on cloud right so apart from what microsoft is saying or what the vendor is saying we would have an own list of best practices right so what we want to do is we would want to apply those best practices within this environment by using azure auto manage apart from this we can monitor for any kind of drift or any changes which has happened right correct it when it is required and all this hard work that we are talking about all these things that we want to achieve is very simple point click set and forget right just select your respective machines configure it set it and it will automatically do it for you that's why the name given as azure auto manage so one would think that when you say it is as simple as click it set it forget it how is that happening is it something which is mapped behind the scene or is it uh, some magic magic wand <laughs> which is being used how is it happening so there's no magic wand actually once it comes to azure auto manage it works with multiple resources which are already there within the environment so it can leverage on those resources can leverage on those members so if you look at microsoft defender for cloud earlier named as security center right it already has set of pre built policies which is azure vm best practices we already have log analytics which is being used over here within azure environment so if you have not configured it we should configure it right that's 
another very very important aspect for insights perspective which we discussed in the previous slides as well configuration management what is a custom configuration that you'd want to create or you have to use a pre-existing configuration that's third and very important member over here in terms of checking the inventory having a azure automation account because when you are applying these policies when you're applying these resources you need to have an automation account for it which will uh, execute or run these things in the back end right so services for update management monitoring so many of us would be considering log analytics as part of the monitoring itself which is absolutely fine so all these services come together and that is being applied or enforced using azure auto manage as a service so certain resources which were being seen as silos or has been seen as an uh, individual members now are coming together as one resource so i hope this helps people to understand what is the significance of azure auto manage and how it brings a lot of best practice how it brings all the best practices and relevant tools or relevant management tools as one unit just give me one moment we have already discussed quite a few aspects over here what i'm going to do is i'm going to create some of the resources over here and we will do the complete hands on towards the end so be with me right now i'm just creating some basic resources over here like my resource group auto manage resource group i'm going to create my log analytics instance over here let me take up a workspace right so two primary resources which i will be using as i proceed ahead these are some of the foundational aspects in your environment you all would already have these resources okay so i'm done with this So as far as log analytics is concerned log analytics will help you associate with set of respective agents do a complete discovery check for resources and show them over here but those things will happen once we specify the appropriate data sources here which would which in this scenario would be our virtual machines i think activity logs have been moved out from here right so we can go to respective uh, 
services or respective members, right? And configure diagnostic services there. So let me go back to my discussion where I was discussing about Azure Auto Manage. One more aspect which I would want to mention over here. So if you want to check for Azure Auto Manage, there are two aspects to it. So one part would be the sales aspect, and another part would be the pre sales aspect. So as part of the sales aspect is concerned, we can look at management and governance section. So here you will find details in terms of blueprint, which I was mentioning earlier. Azure Lighthouse. We have planned for another session for Azure Chaos, uh, Chaos Studio. We'll discuss on this in upcoming session. Then you have Azure Update Management Center. Right now, what I'm discussing is Azure Auto Manage. So you can get all details over here. Defender for Cloud, Azure Monitor. Doing patching with resources. So all marketing based information. Knowing about the service, what it is all about. I'm putting some of these links on the chat window. So I can refer it from here. Second thing that I would recommend you all to look at will be the documentation section, right? And you'll find more details in terms of implementation. How do we proceed ahead with next set of steps over here? Auto manage is another service that should be available here. I'll help you all with the link of the same. If you go to your Azure Architecture Center, right? So, this is another place where you can find some of the best practices, which I was mentioning about. Best practices for your cloud applications, creating respective landing zones over here. Apart from this, we can look at cloud adoption framework because most of these resources which we are coming out from best practices perspective, business commitments, they are all part of your CAF environment. Right? So, how do you create the business commitments over here? How do you have a management baseline for this? Because whatever we have mapped in this environment, in the management section, all these things will be put into practice by using resources like auto manage. Right? So this section is very, very critical, which is a management section.
So once it comes to guys, uh, cloud adoption framework, CAF framework, there are a lot of aspects over here. We'll come to this in more details. From a CAF perspective in another session. Right now, I just want to pick up one aspect over here, which is operations management aspect. Right? So we are talking about business alignment. We mentioned about some of the core details over there. Right? So these aspects you'll find within your CAF environment, operations management workbook. So I can refer to it. So each environment, security management, data protection, desired state configuration, patch management. So whatever discussions which I had with you all from operational compliance perspective, everything you'll find over here. OK. Under business alignment. I'll repeat myself. This is just one section of it. CAF itself is a pretty large framework, so I will. I'm not covering that in this session. I'll cover that in some other session. So you can enroll for it. You can talk to Manish. He can help you all with when we are having another session for, for CAF. So two things, guys, that you all can see over here. One is your operational compliance. That's one. And second is your workload operations. Auto scaling, remediation, application monitoring, right? This is another aspect in terms of workload. So if you recall, while discussing, I mentioned about SLAs in two aspects. One is workload, and second is your operational processes, right? Uh, sorry, uh, platform operations. This was one aspect which I mentioned about, and second was workload operations. So you'll see both these things which are involved over here. And how does one use relevant tools for it? So you'll see Azure Automation over here for workload operations. And you also have Azure Automation for platform operations. Right? So to simplify these aspects, to make it easier for people to work with, we have Azure auto manage over here. So you all can go through this in more details. Let's proceed ahead. I have shared the links on the chat window. For both these members. Now one would say Omprakash suddenly why did you move to the documentation and what was the purpose for it? The reason being this slide which I have created, this is basically coming from the CAF environment. Right? So when an organization is moving to cloud, they will always take up their necessary steps, find out how will be the approach over here, what will be the mechanisms of moving these resources from their on-premises environment to cloud environment. And if there are certain challenges or issues, how do we resolve that? So as part of the phases, there are three phases over here. First would be the prerequisite planning. Where the entire team needs to be briefed about what is this cloud environment? How does it work? How is it different from your existing environment? So everything has to be done in the prerequisite phase. From steps perspective, right? What will be the initial steps? Next set of steps over here. That will be part of the prerequisite planning. How much will be the upfront cost? How much will be the future cost over here? That's a prerequisite planning. Second part would be your onboarding of resources. Getting into the server environment finding out how these services are running. What are the options available? Now there are two ways of doing it. So one way is you go inside every machine and do management of that or get insight for that. Or 
you need to configure set of tools which can help you get that information without going inside the machine. OK. So just give me a moment. Let me. Go to my Azure environment. And add a virtual machine over here. Let me take a Windows machine. I'll keep the same region. It can be an older machine as well, not a problem. So you can see the complete details. In your auto managed configuration or auto managed documentation, which kind of machines are supported, not supported. So I'll come to that section as we go ahead. You can take whatever disk type that you would want. I leave networking details as it is. Guys, some of the features are already available. Some of the features are already there. Azure Auto Manage tries to bring in all these things at one place. Let me enable guest diagnostic for it. We can add this extension later as well. Right, so here if you see. You have Azure Auto Manage Configuration extension. We will need to add this extension over here when we are creating our machine. Now one would say, Om Prakash, can we add this extension later? Yes, no problem with that. So I added the extension. Let's go ahead, click on create. Meanwhile, this machine is getting created. Let me add a Linux machine over here. So I'm taking both these VMs over here. Windows VM and Linux VM. Whichever type of disk you'd want to add.
for Linux, we don't have a guest diagnostic. I'll add the extension later. In case of Windows, I did it immediately. For Linux, I'll show you all how do you add extension later because both the ways are possible. And I would also want you all to see the difference. If I have added that extension, how does it behave? And if I have not added the extension, how does it behave? So what we did right now, I showed you all phase two right now. So in case of phase two, what I have done is. While creating the machine, I have added the extension. Which is onboarding for management services. I have made provision for log analytics. So as I go ahead, I will configure the VM insights over here. Map that to log analytics. It will take some time. I know that. Let me check if my Windows VM is ready. Yep, I have got my resource ready and it's running. Like I was mentioning about, so we can go and add an extension from here. Let me go to the insights section. And like I said, I want to enable. VM insights and map it to the log analytics database, which I have. I have log analytics workspace, which I have already created. I can associate this with Sentinel as well. As I go ahead. And that's the reason why I have a custom. Log Antics workspace. So if you see guys, you already have. Some of the resources here auto manage available. I'll come to that section as I proceed ahead. Right. So what I'm doing right now is I'm first creating the machine and I'm doing the onboarding process right now. And with resources like VM insights, Azure Auto Manage, I can make sure I have an insight on that machine. I need to know what processes are running, how many drives which I have, how much is the consumption of those drives. So all these things I will do through the phase two, which is onboarding of these machines, associate them with management services. Now while this process is happening, let's take a quick break. 10 minutes, grab a cup of tea or coffee. Let's quickly assemble back and look at the next set of implementation steps. And other core details about Azure Auto Manage. So everyone grab a cup of tea or coffee. Let's assemble back in 10 minutes.
वेलकम बैक एवरी वन लेट्स प्रोसीड है सो बिफोर द ब्रेक वॉट वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट इज द नीड फॉर आज योर ऑटो मैनेज वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ इन साइट्स एंड अदर कंपोनेंट विच गेट एसोसिएटेड विथ आज योर ऑटो मैनेज एंड टू मेक श्योर वी आर एबल टू मैनेज दिस रिसोर्सेस इन मच मोर इजियर फॉर्मैट So what we did is we created two machines over here. One was Windows machine, and while creating the machine, we added the auto manage resource over here. Right, that was one. Second thing that we did is we added a Linux machine, but in Linux machine we have not added that extension during the machine creation. And as we said, we will add that later. So. Let's go to the next section here. As part of Azure Auto Manage, what are the key resources that we have, and how it can help us manage this complete platform? So, first thing which Azure, Azure Auto Manage does is it reduces the way how we it reduces the number of steps for how we manage and configure resources for Windows Server and Linux environment. Along with this, if you look at the costs over here, and when I say reduced costs, this refers to a lot of third-party resources that people are using, organizations are using for configuring these members, working with these resources, right? So we can minimize these things by using a pre-given resource by Microsoft itself, which is Azure to manage. another important aspect that you will see over here since azure platform azure environment it knows about the best practices it knows about what goes inside these machines right so it can help you with optimization of these operations optimization and association with platform operations and workload operations together so instead of using these third party resources third party softwares which are which we are installing on these machines right it becomes much more easier with azure auto manage from detection of drift any kind of changes which is happening on the machine by installation of other resources those things can be managed over here easily and if you look at the simplicity the way i showed you all how we can configure azure auto manage as an extension it becomes effortless for us let me go back to my environment and let's go to auto manage so you'll see you have azure auto manage management of best practices so you'll see three core members over here one is your azure machine best practices your custom configuration profiles and third is auto manage for windows server let's go to the first resource or i'm trying to showcase is how we can get these features now first thing guys if you all see over here once it comes to your auto manage as a resource let me share the documentation link for this so anybody who has azure subscription you'll have pre configured environment for it you all can go and try out the hands on been given as part of your documentation right so one very important aspect which i was mentioning about which are the windows server versions which are being supported so anything which is after 2012 r2 is being supported so 2012 r2 to windows server 22 windows 
all of these are being supported within Azure Auto Manage. Same thing holds true for Linux versions as well. Linux distributions. CentOS, REHL, Red Hat Linux, your Ubuntu environment. You have multiple options available here. So if you go to your enablement of Azure Auto Manage, you have three set of members over here. Now one would say, Om Prakash, I am I'm, I'm new to this environment. I don't know what is relevant for my machines. What should I do? What are the best practices? Don't worry. Directly go ahead with Azure best practices, production or dev test. So anything which is essential for the production environment, it's already being pre-programmed. Everything is being there pre-mentioned over here. Same thing holds true for dev and test as well. So whatever is the best practice is being enforced, everything is being mentioned over here. During my discussion, like I said, there will be various people who have already been into this role and they have been successfully managing their on-premises environment. They would say, I don't want to use a uh, standard profile. Instead, I would want to go for a custom profile. OK, no problem. So you can go for your custom profile. Specify the rules or details that you would want and we can proceed ahead with it. I'll show an example of custom profile as I proceed ahead. Let's begin with production environment right now. So if you want to find out what are the details. Right, you can check for members over here. Microsoft. Anti malware update management. Automation account log analytics workspace, right? So what happens behind the scenes? Everything is being exposed to us. So we will come to know what are the steps which is being done behind the scene over here. Now this is basically a. Best practices production environment which I'm taking. Let's go to our Windows machine. Let's click on review and create. What it'll do is it will automatically associate the profile over here. And when I say it's simple click and forget, this is what we mean by it. Just go ahead. Once your machines are being created. This might take some time. So meanwhile, this is happening. Let's proceed ahead. Now once it comes to your auto manage environment. Again, I'll repeat myself. I'm not saying that we have not been doing these things in past, but we'll have to go to 10 different places, perform 20 different steps for doing all these things. Which is being simplified by one resource. So in terms of creation, in terms of management, all these things becomes easier for us. And that's the core purpose. Of how these things can be created. Second thing that you'll see, which I did right now in front of you all, point and click simplicity. So you decide what will be the best practices. You decide what will be the details over here, and we can apply it smoothly. In terms of security updates that you'll see, 
patching that we perform and patching is something which is very, very critical for all the machines that we are creating. Right now in those scenarios, you can deploy your updates. You can apply those features without having to reboot for hot patches. In terms of uh, server message blocks, now this is a very important aspect and in today's environment. Uh, if you look at things like NetApp or um, other SMB based resources, server message blocks, you have Azure file server, uh, Azure uh, files as well, storage files, right? So they're also file sharing as a resource that is very much in demand, right? So in terms of securely transferring those files, we can make use of quick as a protocol over here. And this is being managed via your Azure auto manage. Now, why is this required? So when you are managing these resources, any kind of new updates or new features you have to push to these to these uh, servers. It will need SMBs. For larger message message chunks that you are data chunks that you are sending and to speed up this process, this will make a really sense over here. While you are transferring these contents, the private IP address will remain the same. No changes there. Now, once it comes to your VM configuration management, I have already been mentioning about the drift over here. So whenever it, it moves from the original configuration to the new configuration because of the development changes, because of other modifications that is being made. Right, so those things. Can have a simplified process by using Azure Auto Manage. What I showed you all right now was two configurations, which is dev test and production. So in my current Linux and Windows environment, what I have applied is. What I have applied for both of them is the production environment. Production profile. While we are configuring these things. Configuring the best practices, right? And there are so many administrators who will be working on with this platform. Right each. Member each. Uh, team member will have different set of. Each team member will have different experience expertise. They would have gone through their own. Uh, resources, right? They would have their different set of experiences. What they would want to do is they would. Uh, create these things, they would create these members. Right. With their different expertise, what will happen is there will be discrepancies across the environment. I'm not uh, denying the fact about their experience, but what would happen is there is no consistent or single. Uh, single consistent approach being applied on all the machine. Right, so even if there is. Uh, some such requirement, all administrators should come together. Discuss debate saying this is a kind of workload in production environment. This is what we are looking at, right? Let's come together, define a final set of rules and guidelines. Or even if there are say three to four profiles that needs to be created, custom profiles, no issues. Right, so for each specific workload, we can have a different custom profile being created and we can apply that. So if that is being done, it will still be a known devil to handle. <laughs> so we know that these are four configurations. This is being discussed, debated. Everybody has agreed to it. And I don't think there should be a, there is any problem with this. Right, so that's how we can make sure everything is being documented and known to the entire team rather than having hidden facts over here. Let me check if this is done. OK, so Linux environment is being done. Windows 
is uh, still in progress. OK, this also is done. So I've successfully onboarded both these members over here. If we go to the configuration profiles, so there are two profiles which are built in. One is production profile, second is dev test profile. So what I have applied right now is a production profile for both these members. So what it does is it will check for. The machine in uh, the current application contents being deployed, the resources being created over here and show us the status. Whether the uh, resource is conformant, whether it is compliant, non compliant, what are the issues over here? So all these things we can see as part of the status over here. Along with this, as you keep installing resources, as you keep installing components over here, it will show you recommendations saying that this is certain thing which is not being followed. Or this is certain thing which is recommended in this environment, which has not been done. If you look at these Windows Server environment, the third member that I mentioned about. Right, so here we can have Windows servers server environment, which is primarily meant for virtual machines on Azure. With Azure auto managed configuration, right? We can also connect to our on premises environment on premises resources check for those members. Another option that we have is using Azure auto manage. Uh, sorry, uh, using Azure automation. And using. Automation having hybrid configuration over there, we can connect to our on premises environment as well. So check for any kind of DSC compliance or resources in, within that. Right. I've already shared the links with you all. From a documentation standpoint. So if you see the steps over here. Best practices profile for production. Best practices profile for dev and test. So if you want to disable some of the uh, disable the auto or uh, auto manage. We can do that as well. We have options for enabling and disabling the configuration. For Linux machine, I would want to go for dev test. For Windows machine, I want to go for production environment. So we can decide what kind of profile we would want to create for each of these members. I take a moment. So you can see two different configuration profiles over here. Now, once it comes to Azure Auto Manage, one needs to understand the details over here. 
what is the prerequisites for auto or uh, for Azure Auto Manage to be applied on these machines. So step number one. You'll have to choose the right kind of machine, which should be, like I said, Windows Server 2012 R2 to 2022. That should be one. Second is from a client side machine. It needs to be Windows 10 environment. They can have CentOS, Ubuntu, SUS implementation. That's another important aspect. Now, once it comes to Azure Auto Manage, since it is in preview right now, it may not be supported on all the regions. OK, it may not be supported in all the regions currently. But as we go ahead, it will be supported in all possible regions. So the list of regions also is being available in the documentation section. So which regions we have these features, which regions we don't have it as of now. I think the next point is pretty simple and straightforward. Since we are enabling auto manage, we need to make sure we are uh, we have a owner permissions, contributor permissions, because we are trying to scan the complete system. We are trying to get the complete environment, and then we can go and apply these things over here. So any kind of sandbox subscription that you have. That will not be supported. Right. Sandbox in sense when I uh, I'm, I'm not sure if everybody has been through Microsoft Learn environment that it provides you a sandbox subscription. Now within that environment, it will not work. So if you have a MCT subscription or a, even a free trial, it will work in both these cases. I already discussed about the prior services, so in terms of boot diagnostics, security center, right? So all these services come together as part of update management, right? All these things are part of a single member, and that's how it, it makes sure that we have one centralized resource, one single resource, which will take care of all the members together. Right, and that's the core feature of that. That's the core purpose of Azure Auto Manage. So all these services together, some of them would be working in the back end. All of these things have a single point of contact, which is Azure Auto Manage. Configuration profiles I discussed about dev and test. I discussed about production. Next thing which I want to discuss about is custom profile and how do we create that. OK. So I've shown you both the examples. I'm sure this should be done by now. Yeah, so Linux is done. Linux also is conformant. If you go to these machines. You can see the configuration profile and you can see the status over here. Another important aspect, guys, if you all see. Right now, since I have a smaller environment. Just uh, two machines, sample machines created. It will be easier for us to see whether the machine is conformant or not. But if you have a lot of complex workloads or resources being deployed. There are number of states which are possible. So right now we are able to see only two states. So in progress while where you can see the icon. Right and second option over here that we see is conformant. So only two things being done and job is taken care. There are other aspects as well. So next status that you'll see I, instead of state, I would say status here. So next status option that you see is non conforming. And in which scenario will will this happen? Non conforming can happen when you are. 
uh, when there are multiple updates happening on the machine, there is a third party custom image being used over here. And you have take, uh, created a machine using that custom image. Right, so there. There could be a chance that it is showing a non conformant as a status. Next resource over here, next status over here would be it needs an upgrade. So if you have a machine. Say uh, Windows 7. Right, Windows 7 or earlier, or a, even if you have a server environment, which is 2008, right? In those cases, it will show you that this machine needs an upgrade. Now, if there are certain custom software, third party software that you have added inside that, and it is not able to figure out, it will show you unknown as a resource, as an unknown as a status, saying that I'm sorry, I will not, I'm not able to figure out what has gone wrong. So whether it's a conformant issue or upgrade issue, I'm not sure on that. Right, so these are set of issues that one can see, or these are some of the status that one can see once it comes to your Azure Auto Manage. I'm sorry guys, I don't have a complex environment right now to showcase with 510 machines, different type of virtual machine images. So what I have done is I have shown you a basic environment right now with three existing images from the uh, image repository or the marketplace and apply this auto manage production and dev test on that. <clears throat> Last time when I was working with it, it took slightly longer. So what I have done is I have captured screenshots of these members. So we can configure these things and the moment and, and you'll see over here. Last time when I was working, I had only two options. Azure machine best practices. Azure machine best practices and configure profile. In I think less than a week's time, they have added a third member as well. Auto manage for Windows Server. For. Hybrid environment. So if, if you all remember. In, in my in my prior conversation. In my prior conversation, I mentioned about on premises environment. So here Microsoft is pitching for. Azure stack HCI or Windows Server Azure Edition. So using this, we can manage on-premises environment as well. Right now it is only for Windows Server. As we proceed ahead, it will be made available for Linux machines as well. That's my assumption as of now, because all these resources are in preview. Azure Auto Manage is in preview right now. Next thing which I mentioned about once it comes to your extensions. So is an extension for Windows environment. Meanwhile, there's also an extension available for Linux. So depending upon which kind of. Virtual machine you are creating, you can add that configuration. Either while creating the machine or after creating the machine. OK. This is what I showed you all. How do you uh, onboard the machine? Have your machines created. So earlier when I had created my machines, I had named it separately. So you can see the machine name here. For production environment, for dev test environment. Now, when you're working with these resources, one of the important members over here is having a system assigned managed identity. Right now, why is this required? Now system assigned managed identity is needed. To make sure. Uh, checking for owner permissions, contributor permissions, right? Who can perform what options over here? Right, so those things we have to check by uh, enabling identity for this. And here what is what is required is system assigned managed identity. So even if you want to uh, give it give some of these roles to other people, right? You can use RBAC over here and you can assign permissions to those people. 
So you would not want to make everybody a owner, right? Or everybody a contributor, but still you'd want to give them permissions for auto management. Let me go to my virtual machine. Let me go to identity. Can you see this? It has automatically assigned a identity. System assigned managed identity. Same thing holds true for Linux as well. Because this is one of the members, one of the uh, steps which is involved behind the scene, creating a system assigned managed identity. Once you have your configuration being created, configuration being done, you'll be able to see the features over here. Now, if you are not, uh, say for example, you have created your uh, machine, you go to auto manage and you don't see anything here, right? It shows everything deselected or blank, which clearly means that you have not enabled system assigned managed identity. So do that first and then try this feature. OK. It will automatically help you will automatically see this options enabled for you. This step is very, very essential. And this will work only if you have assigned system assigned managed identity. So if it is it if it if you it is not working for you, there's nothing to panic. Just go and go to the identity section. Enable system assigned managed identity. Right, then you'll be able to see these features enabled for you. So I had captured this screenshot <laughs> because I did that mistake, right? I wanted to see. I want to make this work and see how this is working without system assigned managed identity. I already showed you all the status for conformant in case of Windows machine, Linux machine, both of it. So if you look at the configuration profile details. It will show you some of the features, whether the backup is being configured or not. Right, it will perform. Uh, it will show you all the details. For the pre configured profile, let me show you this. Let me go to the Windows environment. Windows uh, machine for this. Can you see this? So it has started verifying it and it has given two recommendations over here. SMB for quick should be enabled. Earlier this was not configured. Now it is being configured internally and it is a healthy process. So there are two things over here. One is telling what is the error and second is making corrections for that as well. And it is not just a one time kind of step. So as you keep installing resources, as you keep making changes over here, it will keep running this as a, as a background thread, keep verifying what is needed to be done, and it will keep you updated over here, saying that this is a new change being done, and this is a modification being required. I already discussed about the Linux environment. How we can configure these members over here. You can see the complete status report. So what is the profile? 
when the when was the scan being done? So what is the services being verified over here? Change. Track data type configuration software. Change track Windows services. Linked services automation. So what is the actual steps being done? So when you say a profile, what is that profile? And what changes has been done behind the scenes? So you see all these things under the status section. So if you want to see the profile details. You can see it over here. So what it is checking for Windows Admin Center, Boot Diagnostics, Automation Account. So if something is not being done, it will tell you clearly that this is what is expected and not being done. You'll see since I have enabled VM insights over here. You can see the updates over here. Checking for change tracking automate Azure automation accounts. So you'll see all these members over here. Which is uh, facilitating or which is running behind the Azure auto manage environment. So before I proceed ahead, anybody any questions over here? So uh, uh, I have a question. So at sure. the time of creation, the VM Windows VM, we select the extension for the Azure uh, auto manage, but for right. Linux Linux VM, we didn't uh, select those option. Right. For yes. my question is that, but whenever we are assigning the profile for the auto, mm -hmm. auto manage to the VM, associating the associating part is I mean, perfectly working for both the VM. I agree. Yes. So means then what is the uh, mean uh, utility to install the extension before means at the creation of the VM? Means that does it require? It's not a compulsion. Extension? So what is the function of that extension? That ex the functionality of the extension is to add resources onto your machine. So it will improve the pro it will improve the time taken for onboarding, but that's not a compulsion. Even if you don't add an extension, that's not a compulsion. It will automatically add the extension when you try onboarding it. OK, so could you please show me the extension that already been installed for that VM? Linux and Windows both. Sure, I'll do that. So if you go to virtual, if you go to virtual machines, Linux virtual machines. Can I see this? So you have configuration agents installed for Linux. Same way if you go for Windows. You have extensions and in installed for Linux. So Azure policy uh, policy we didn't install, right? Yes, so with auto manage it will automatically install okay. all the other relevant okay, okay. extensions. OK, OK, got it. So according to OS flavor, uh, the number of extension I think in install, right? Yes, that's right. And um, uh, the existing VMs uh, from the you can say production and dev test environment, we can add it in Nato Manager uh, uh, group, right? By Sorry, once again, can uh, you repeat the question? Suppose there is existing prod on uh, dev, dev test environment and yes. I want to uh, add some of the VMs into the Atto manage. Uh, you can see. Yes, group. you can do that. Yeah. All okay. existing virtual machines, you can add it over here. No problem. OK, according to uh, the profile and all these things, we need to prerequisite. Yes. 
and need to configure accordingly. Absolutely correct. Okay. But in case of Linux, uh, the policy is not installed. In case of Linux? Linux VM, Azure yes. policy, extension uh -huh. that are not installed. Now that's what I think somebody said meant very clearly. That this depends upon which is the kind of OS that you are going for. And for Windows, we have installed VM insights as well, if you remember. Okay. So some of these extensions are coming from the insights as well. That was the additional change that we did over there. Okay. Mm, yeah, for the VM, uh, we install uh, explicitly that insight. Uh... Yes. What is important over here is system assigned managed identity. So that is that should be there. That that creates automatically, right? Yes. Okay. Let's move so, ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, go ahead. So in, in case of the auto manage uh, mm -hmm. profile, so we found there are six or seven uh, parameters that we can be enabled, like backup um, and uh, on, on, OK. So in uh, in custom, so that is that are all uh, six or additional we can add. Or we'll come to that as you go ahead, we'll come to that. OK, so thank you. OK, so till now what we have done is we have seen for production environment. We have seen for. Dev test environment. What we have not worked with is custom profile. Right, so as the name suggests, we will first have to create the custom profile. And then we can associate the custom profile with our. Virtual machine. Let me go back. Disable auto manage for. My machines. Let's go to configuration profiles. So here we already have production and dev test. Let's create a new configuration profile. Whatever profile name you want to give. Whatever resource group you want to mention for this. While you are creating this custom profile. You have number of options available. So whether you want to. Add some uh, enforce backup over here. What will be details of that for how many days it has to be retained? Whether you want to configure Microsoft anti malware. Whether you want to configure machine insights, monitoring. Auto manage update management. Tracking and inventory. So there are a lot of pre built members over here. So some of these things are fixed, which you cannot change. There are others that you can modify. Say, for example, if you are configuring for Windows machine, we can configure Windows Admin Center as well. This is for ARC enabled servers or your Windows machines. So, depending upon what kind of configuration you want to change, what kind of features you want to in enforce over here, So from UI perspective, this is what we can add over here. I hope this answers the question. Yes. OK. Let's go ahead. Click on create. Let's 
So in auto manage, yes. suppose I have selected the backup option. Means hmm. In dev test or uh, production, the backup is there. So uh, if I select those backup option, and my machine should automatically come under the backup. And first question. So and second question, if it comes under the backup, so how the backup profile has been created? So that should be created manually. Or it is if, also in. If you recall, when we started off with the session, we said these are best practices. So it will tell you that, yes, you should take a backup. It will not automatically take a backup. So it will create a backup policy for you and keep those things ready. So once you say, yes, I want to take a backup, you can create your recovery services vault and you can initiate the backup there. It will not create a back recovery services vault for you. That you will have to do. Okay. But if you have not enabled backup, it will say that this is the policy or audit score which is not being Follow. This is the best practice which is not being followed. Like how you have been using Azure Advisor, right? So Azure Advisor or Azure Policy it can just hint you or uh, give you uh, alert saying that this particular best practice is not being followed. But it is your responsibility to create relevant resources and take the backup. Okay. Does it make sense? Uh, yes, I, I, I understand. OK. So once we have this custom profile created. Let me go to my virtual machine. Let's go to. Auto manage. Instead of checking the existing profiles, let me go for custom profile. So I can create new from here as well. We can check the profile details. What was what was being selected? And once we are done with selecting our profile. Click on enable. So status we already mentioned earlier. What is the possible options for status? It's a free service or paid service. This is a free service right now. But still, uh, that's a very valid question. So if you have to find out whether a given service is free or paid. You can go to. Our pricing section. Because these are the services which are in preview right now. I'm if this is uh, the service is not available here, which means it's a free service. So I'm checking under the management section, management and governance. I also check over here. No, it's a free service. From whatever I know. Because anything which is being paid as a pay, uh, any service is paid service, you'll see it under the. Pricing section. <laughs> So we have checked our profile. We have applied the custom profile over here and the status says this machine is conformant. As per the rules or uh, best practices which is being selected.
another thing which I have done over here was I had configured the VM insights. For my Windows VM. You can see over here. So this would be a significance of. VM insights and this is what I have been mentioning earlier as well. So without going inside the machine, I will be able to find out. Details about what is happening inside that VM. In terms of CPU utilization, memory utilization. Logical disk space being used. Using this log analytics, I've stored all this information here. So I can see heartbeat, insight metrics, any kind of alerts being raised or configured. So VM insights is a really, really helpful resource. Some of these pre knowledge or prior information that everybody should have is working with KQL queries. Using log analytics. So once you have configured it, just go for virtual uh, uh, Azure monitor insights virtual machines. You'll find all members over here. So this was quick look in terms of how do you create custom configuration? And. From a profile perspective, so you can have your own custom profile or you can have your depth test profile production profile. Apart from this, I already mentioned about. Server management services within the CAF environment. Some of the initial resources which I have shown. From a diagram diagram perspective, all this is part of your best practices guidelines of CAF. So Microsoft is not just giving set of guidelines and. Which is also Im helping us implement these things by giving pre existing services like Azure Auto Manage. So CAF is where you'll find all these details. What are the best practices?
So go to the link which I have shared. Update management, change tracking management, desired state. Con so I did discuss uh, quite a few details about DSC, desired state configuration, but we didn't see that as part of the implementation. Just give me one moment. So while you're doing Azure Auto Manage, you have automation resource which will get sorry anybody any question okay i think by mistake somebody has left the mic open so what i was talking about is desired state configuration here once you create your auto manage you'll also have the azure automation account credit behind the scene so we can go here under configuration management. We can go to state configuration. DST. This is called as desired state configuration. And similar to what I did in Azure auto manage, I can go and uh, create a custom configuration or I can use a pre existing configuration. So I want to configure something on my. Windows machine. Right, so I can connect this resource. I have to mention what configuration I would want to create. Reboot the node if required. Right, so I have to first create the configuration and after creating the configuration, I can select and apply it over here. When you are. Creating this configuration. What all resources you'd want to. Add as part of the members. Whatever features you'd want to add over here, all the dependencies that you'd want to mention, right? Those things will be part of your DSC. So you can import a MOF file over here, pre existing DSC file. And once it is done. You can go ahead. This is the file which I was talking about the MOF file. How, how do I get moment. this MO, MOF file? It's a template kind of means. You will have to really? write that MOF file locally. On your oh, system, awesome. like how do you get a partial script, right? PS1 file, same. Mm -hmm. thing. Okay. So write that MOF file yourself, and once it is done. Okay, I understand. That should be uploaded. Yes, that should be already available. Once you have done with your DSC. You can apply that DSC on respective nodes. 
I'm not able to get the configuration over here. Configuration file. So if you want to check for web server over here. So which Windows server or which component you want to ensure? You can verify that over here. And once it is compiled. You can go and apply it onto your respective machines. So CAF is one of the important resources that you all should go through from a planning perspective. From an implementation perspective, I have already shown you what are the features, what are the resources over here. Anyone, any questions? I could get questions only from two of them. How about others? OK, so thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much for your patience and support. Hello, Manish, over to you. Yes, 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 Om Prakash. one second. Give me one minute only. Okay. I'm sharing a feedback link in the chat box. Uh, can you please uh, fill the feedback uh, form? Yeah, sure, Manish. Okay. Yes, I have shared already. Please check. Uh, thank you, Om Prakash, uh, for this wonderful uh, session. I hope all have got a lot to learn through it, uh, through this uh, Azure Auto Managed uh, for Comprehensive Management of Virtual Machines session. Yeah. Thank you. Thank My you team has provided system. all the uh, all the links for your reference in chat box already. OK. Also, before leaving uh, the webinar is uh, webinar. Before leaving, please uh, do submit your feedback because our your feedback is valuable for us. So please uh, submit your feedback form before leaving. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you, Monish, and thank you for the uh, the session. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Neil. Yeah, so uh, uh, I just have a suggestion in case of uh, any CAF or blueprint like a session, it be there in the future that will be helpful for me. We are uh, uh, uploading this session on our YouTube channel. Please follow our YouTube channel so you can uh, get it, get that link. So, so could you please share those YouTube? I'm channel sharing uh, our YouTube channel link in uh, chat box. OK, thank you. Please check the link I have already shared. Please subscribe our YouTube channel so you can
Guys, please fill the feedback form. Okay, uh, I'm just sharing the feedback uh, within five minutes. Okay, so can I leave now? Okay. Yes, okay. yes, sure. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. We have our upcoming sessions, two upcoming sessions on certification. Uh, first session is on uh, 13 and 14 October. Uh, AZ 900 Microsoft Azure Fundamental. It's full day uh, station. OK, you can register for this session. We have one more upcoming session on uh, SC400 Microsoft Information Protection Administrator on 15th October 10 to 4 p.m. It's full day session. You can attend this session. Uh, in this session, uh, we are providing MOCs, Microsoft official, official curriculum to each participants as well as uh, you can uh, get uh, a C400 uh, badge also. Once again, I'm uh, announcing we are providing this uh, rec session recording. So please uh, subscribe our YouTube channel so you can get the notification from our side.
guys if you already submitted uh, the feedback form you can lift the meeting thank you thank you guys thanks for your participation have a great weekend thank you